I'm Karen Glasser here, and welcome to Life Uncorked. Today's segment is all about aging like a fine wine, and who better to have on the show is Tara Bennett-Smith, the producer, director, actress, writer, and mom. That's and right. she likes to say she's living her bigger, better, bolder, better self every day. Say that 10 times fast. Welcome to the show, <laughs> Tara. <laughs> yeah, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Bigger, better, bigger, better. Bigger, better, bolder, better. And if you get it and you say it, and that, that's good. I'm glad you said that because it helped to remind me to say it. I haven't said it in a while. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. I think of that when I think of you uh, yeah. because it's a great it's a great tagline. Mm -hmm. So let's just start from the beginning. Back when, Tara, you back then, how did what's your journey like to get to where you are right now? It doesn't have to be a whole to do, but tell us the short version of your journey. Well, the short version, I grew up in New York. Um, my mother uh, in what's considered the South Bronx, not when I was growing up, it was just the Bronx and then it became the South Bronx, but I'm told now it's being gentrified. So now it's Sobro. Uh, but anyway, so I grew up in what they call Sobro now and um, in the projects. And my mother was a single parent for most of when my parents got divorced, I don't remember how old I was, mm -hmm. but in order to keep us nice and busy and off the streets, she kept us involved in the performing arts. So we start, I started mm -hmm. dancing at the age of five in Elsie Andrews Dance School and then went on to do theater, musical theater and vice versa. And that kind of was my bug. I, I've never been a, I never really enjoyed school the way they teach. And I probably, because if, back then I I'm, I'm, might've been diagnosed with a learning challenge. Mm. Uh, but no one, you know, back then you weren't diagnosing right. and you just couldn't focus, you know, basically is what we were dealt with. Right. So I always knew that I loved the arts and I would find any way to perform, whether putting on my own little talent shows on, on, on the balcony. We had a terrace on each floor in the building where I grew up and I would do shows and oh, have to buy it. tickets and all my friends would be in it. So that was kind of my beginning, but I didn't realize how it was, it was, nurturing and and it was nurturing and and teaching and grooming me to become a producer director i just knew i wanted to perform but i didn't know that me putting on my own shows producing them getting the talent getting the tickets was basically producing right so i started doing that and then over the years um you know kind of got sick of doing musical theater because that's mostly what i was getting in new york and then i moved I got my first two commercials and I got my first Broadway show in my teens. And wow. So, <laughs> and then I started a record label in my teens and got an opportunity to tour Europe because I wanted to sing. So I said, well, if I, nobody's going to give me a record deal, I started wow. my with my godfather and a friend of mine. We started a record label. So that's kind of the backstory. Then I moved out to LA and got a real record deal with RCA Records with another, with a girl group and started doing more television, which I was excited about. The very first thing that I booked was a pilot, a spinoff for The Facts of Life. Uh, Natalie's character was moving to New York. It was going to be called Big Apple Blues. And I was going to be one of her roommates with David Spade and Richard Grieco. And I forgot the other young lady's name. So we were all roommates in the city. It didn't get picked up, but it was a nice experience. So my very first thing that I booked out here was a television pilot. Ah which taught me a lot about the fact that I can have those things, you know, that I could have a record deal and I'm capable of doing this and right. I'm capable of doing that. Even though somewhere in the back of my mind, when you grow up in poverty or you grow up with lack or, you know, you lose your mother very early, which I did at the age of 16, I lost, basically was parentless. Um, I had aunts who took over, but didn't have, you know, a parent. Right. Um, so with that said, there's a lot of, yin and yang that goes on inside of myself you know that's the pull and pull push and pull so outside of that i started um doing television uh in front of the camera and someone asked me to direct something and i just did it for the fun of it and found out years later which adds into where i'm what i'm doing now that i ended up being a director and a producer i think part of one of the reasons is i like the freedom of doing things the way i like to do them you know, I'm not very good at a job that I don't like. Um, <laughs> I've tried. I've tried a few of them. And um, yeah, you would fire me. With What's people. interesting, Tara, is that you you create 
what you want to do. You you actually create those entities, those those uh, opportunities maybe when nobody else might give you that opportunity. And so you have spent your career, at least it would appear, creating those opportunities, not yes. just for you, but for other people as well. Very much so. And and with that comes a lot of headache. Just to be honest, it's not the, always the easiest road. Right. But it's a road that fits who I am better than right. me sitting around waiting. So. so what would you say is driving you right now? What drives me is basically that there are no other options. <laughs> you know, if I don't do it, what I love, then what happens? You know, I'm kind of here until we are no longer here, until we make our transition. If you're not trying to push forward and finding new ways to, to, to live your life and be creative and go after the things you want, then what is part, what is the point of this journey that we're doing? Right. Um, right. Yeah, right. so I guess that's what drives me is the fact that I just will take no for an answer. And it may not appear to work one way, uh, so I look for another way to get around it. I don't like anybody to put a brick wall up in front of me, even though I may want to cry that particular day because there's a brick wall in front of me. You know, I, I'll <laughs> cry and then I figure out how to kick the wall down. And how to kick the wall, down. how to yeah. kick the wall down. It's just a desire that as long as we're here, we have an opportunity to, as long as we're here, we can move. We have sane mind. We're physically able to get up and move about. Right. We have a duty to ourselves to honor us as individuals. Amen. Because, you know, I have friends of mine who are, who are younger than me who are struggling physically with health issues that, you know, I know that if they would give their limb to be able to get back up and walk the way they used to walk and not be going to the doctor every day or not be trying to figure out... Right. You know, I would just love to be able to do my craft or do my art. And when you don't have that opportunity, um, things look different. And I don't want things to look different because I I let it slide or I didn't give it my best. I think it's so important what you're saying. I, I mean, truly. And it is very inspiring. And the next I was going to say, what inspiration can you give to someone who is starting uh, something new maybe in this chapter in life? And you're kind of already saying it is don't stop. Yeah, you know, um, this is my, this year, 2023 was the year I became a senior, official senior, as they say. High five, Tara. Okay. High five. <laughs> and, um, you know, seniors, when, when we were told about them, they did not look like us to me. <laughs> you know, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't remember them. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Like I, this. Right. I don't remember, you know, too many that I knew could just go you know, hike four or five hours to work out, lift weights, you know, take right. classes. You know, I don't remember that. So I think for me, for you, whatever age, it's like until you're dead, you're not dead. Agreed. And until they come to get you, you have an opportunity to to reinvent yourself. Right now, I'm the CCO, Chief Content Officer of a new company called Inyani. I've never been in the C Club because I strayed away from jobs, but this particular a venture spoke to me because I get to do everything I love to do. Right. Plus, plus be a CCO, be in charge, do it the way oh, I love. So, so that's something new for you. This that is, is very new. This so all happened this next. year. So what this year. that is for you. What's next? And what's next is the opportunity to travel and be on and, and to employ myself in any of the fields that I love. And then to be of service, I'm opening up hopefully soon in 2024, a creative arts center. I'm starting small with a venture with a friend of mine. I have that going. I have Inyani going. And um, I'm exhausted. I'm, I'm exhausted listening to but you. Those are the, those are the things I'd, I'd love to have a creative arts center that a place that I used to go to when I was young, you know, that helped me to hone and hone my crafts and my craft and, um, just, you know, have a camaraderie with other yeah. like-minded artists. So, yeah. yeah. So for those of you, and I know it's a lot of you out there, would like to stay connected to Tara, you can go visit her website at reclaimhaven.com. What are they going to find there, Tara? They're going to find a lot of things that uh, where I have workshops and things for women, especially for women who want to redesign. I do a thing called redesigning your blueprint and rewriting your script. So... Mm -hmm. You know, it, you can do it at any age. So that's what you're going to find there. Plus some things on 
you know, what I do in my workshops and, and a little bit more about me. And they can find you on Facebook at Tara Bennett Smith. And they can also find you on Instagram at the Tara Bennett Smith. Any last thoughts you would like to share with our audience? Just my quote that I say on a regular basis. You woke up this morning, everything else is profit. Yes. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. We know you have a choice. Go out and give someone an awesome day. And Tara, thank you again. And we'll see thank everyone next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Yes.